What's up guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about The Flash, season seven, it's finally here. Episode one, the premiere episode for the season titled All's Well That Ends Wells. It's kind of the end of last season, but it's the premiere for this season. It's, it's like a combo thing. We got like confirmation on Twitter from Danielle Panabaker. I believe that's who the confirmation was that the first three episodes of this season are kind of like what how last season was going to end with a few tweaks to it. There we go. Taken care of. It's the premiere episode. Careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is how they dealt with Ralph and Sue. Basically, they're undercover. They're in hiding because they've been framed. And I guess we will like put a bookmark on that and we'll deal with that later on. Who knows? Who knows how he's going to come back? But we know that Sue is supposed to be in the season. So I'm assuming they will address that eventually. And who is Ralph going to be? Who's he going to look like? I'm thinking he's going to look like Wells based on what happens in this episode. But you never know. There you have it. They sort of gave us like a, a tiny explanation for that. So that's good. Let's talk about Iris first. So she's still stuck in the Mirrorverse, obviously. Uh, but she's starting to fracture a bit. At least that's the way it appears when we run into her. She's like seeing these memories of things that aren't real. She feels like she's in the moment, but she's not. Then she realizes she's still in the Mirrorverse. But then she sees herself from different periods in time, like all the way back in season one, up to stuff like with Savitar and just all these different times that she was out doing stuff. She thinks it's like another fractal anomaly. But then this thing tells her it's not. It's her fractured mind. But then it, maybe it's not her fractured mind. It's just weird. She's literally losing her head in the Mirrorverse. Or at least that's the way it seems. But she's trying to hold it together. And Iris is a very strong individual. Mentally, emotionally, I feel like she's got a lot going on with herself. So I think being stuck in this world for her is a little bit different than what was going on with Eva. Because we're going to talk about that in a few moments. What a huge reveal. That'll be like at the very end. But I feel like Iris being stuck in this world is very different from what was going on with Eva. And so she's working on getting out of there. And I, I'm... You know what? I was kind of over the storyline at the end of last season, but since we're on a new season and I feel like we're close to the end of it, I'm actually a little bit invested in it now. I feel like I want to see what's going to happen with this because as we get to the end of Iris's story, it seems like even though Eva's like, I'm manipulating you, I'm trying to break you down. It looks to me like I think Iris is beginning to find a way to control like the Mirrorverse stuff. Possibly manipulate it in the same way Eva does. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think Iris is going to end up getting powers? Because I think that is a possibility. So let me know in the comments below. Would you want to see her with powers or not? Could this be Eva V Iris? I mean, it's possible, right? It could happen, but we're going to see. I wonder if she's going to get out on her own or if Barry's going to actually have to rescue her. That's the bigger question, I suppose. All right. So the other stuff we had going on this episode, we had a test run on what I will call for the moment, new team flash. And the reason why I say that is we have Chester, Allegra, and Nash, and Barry. So we don't have Iris. We don't have Cisco. We don't have Caitlin. It's literally like all the new folks in there working with Barry. And I guess it's their time to shine. So they're all working together, trying to get him his speed back. That is like the number one important thing to do here because Eva's in town. She's still got her powers. She's running around doing her stuff. Iris and their friends are still stuck in the Mirrorverse. So he has to get his speed back because that's the only way to save them. At least they believe that's the only way to save them. We don't know. There could be other ways. Who knows? So they're trying to create this artificial speed force with trial and error. They're not having a lot of luck with it. But Nash is still seeing visions of other wells because they're stuck in his head. We find out they're multiversal particles, guys. These are multiversal particles. So somehow, some way, the universe decided that this wells is the one that's going to survive and all the particles are going to go into him. Now, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't on board with this because it seems like a weird thing to happen. Like, why just Wells? Why just him? And then I thought maybe it's because it's Pariah. Not totally sure, but they decide that's what's happening. So he's seeing these visions of all these other Wells. And there's questions about, like, the, the context of the characters. And should they be there? Shouldn't they be there? Look, I don't know. Really, it was just to serve this purpose in the story, and I could nitpick it, but at the end of the day, based on what happens at the end of the episode, not totally sure it really matters in the big scheme of things. And, you know, we'll talk about that during the after party and see where it goes there. Anyway, so they decide that, that putting these multiversal particles into the spears that are going to power the artificial speed force for Barry is the only way it's going to work, but 
there is a caveat, there is a twist to it, and that is that they need a human element to contain the power as it's going into the spear so that it can go there and stay there and the person doing it will end up dying in the process. So it's not this great thing. Nash doesn't want to sacrifice himself, so he decides, I'm not going to tell anybody about this yet. I'm going to go research and find out another way. So, you know, they determine that Allegra's powers are what they're going to use to put these particles into the spear. Now, I'll be honest, Allegra's not been my favorite character. I'm sort of just whatever with her. She's not awful. She's not great. But I think she did really good in this episode. This was some of the best that we've gotten from Allegra because she felt like a real person. She overacted quite a bit last season. And I felt like, you know, there could have been more there. But we got it this week and we get a bit more from her after we end up solving this with Wells. And I feel like it's genuine and I like that about her. And so she's like, you know, she's growing on me a little bit. But we end up trying to use her powers to push the particles into the spear and so they try to do it, and it seems like it's working. Yes, Barry's going to have his speed back. We're going to have the flashback. But then that doesn't happen. Well, it almost does. But they're losing containment. And if you are a fan of any science fiction TV, you know when they lose containment, that's not good. So Barry goes over near where this thing is, the spear, and gets hit with like a bit of the particles that are coming out of it. And I'm like, what's happened? What's going to go on here? And then it all clicks with me. We saw the picture of Barry wearing the glasses from Wells. Wells is going to be inside Barry. I don't know if it's going to be all of them or just one or how it was going to work, but it sort of clicked for me. And I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense, I guess. Although I feel like it would make more sense that he would see visions of other Wells, but maybe that's because Nash is a Wells. So he was seeing visions of Wells, but when they went to Barry, they sort of just kind of randomly popped up as personalities in his head. Not totally sure. We get a lot of different versions of him. It's a lot of fun. I was enjoying it quite a bit. We get like the 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 Gandalf Wells and um, you know, of course, returning HR and and we get, you know, Wells from Earth 2 and just all these different versions of Wells. Sherlock, which we make the joke about the the name again. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I'm probably saying it wrong. We get him to come back though, but I loved it. This was a lot of fun, and it was good to have this moment of levity in a somewhat serious episode. Uh I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. So eventually Nash comes to the conclusion after some heart to heart stuff that he is going to sacrifice himself to give Barry his speed back because he wants to be the hero and this is what he wants to do. And I thought this was the right decision. However, I did not think what happened next was going to happen. When it said all's well that ends wells, I didn't realize that the play on words was like not only just like a play on words, but it was literal. This is the end of all of the Wellses from the multiverse that we know of right now. All the ones that are inside of Nash, you know, go into this spear to power Barry's speed force. They literally, Wells becomes the speed force. That's literally what he is. And I have a theory about that. We'll talk about that in just a second. But he decides to do this and we get this emotional moment and I was actually tearing up. The Flash doesn't normally make me sad, like it doesn't happen. But seeing all of the goodbyes and hearing all these goodbyes from these different Wellses to Barry was just, it was rough. It was really rough. So well done. So amazing. Tom Cavanaugh, I don't think he's going to be gone for good. So hopefully he comes back soon in some way. But we got to say goodbye to Wells and he becomes the Speed Force for Barry and... My theory about this is that the speed force, the sentient element of the speed force now is going to be Wells. I think when Barry goes into this new speed force, it's just going to be a collection of different Wellses. That's what I think it's going to be. I don't know if it's, it's going to be sentient at all because he keeps saying after the speed force was in him that he can feel the, the love and the energy from the Wellses. I think that's what's going to happen. I don't know. It would be a way to keep Tom on the show. Makes sense to me. So we'll have to see what's going to happen. Let's talk about Eva for a moment. So she's running around doing stuff. She's trying to stop Black Hole and get back at everything that her uh, her husband, I'm going to put that in quotes for now because we find out at the end that there's some weird stuff going on. Trying to stop Black Hole because she's still trying to get back at her husband and everything he built and how he neglected her and left her in the mirror world. Barry's trying to face off against her. Early in the episode, before he gets his speed back, it's like less than 1%. And she's using like fractal powers, fractal speed that moves at light speed to dodge the flash. Now, obviously with Barry being with less than 1% speed at this point, he can't fight against her. Like it's just not possible. She's super fast. She's super powerful. That seems a bit broken to me, but now that he has his speed force back, 
We'll see what's going to happen because Eva, I think that's not going to work once he's back at full speed. But anyway, this is what she does to dodge him, knocks him out. She goes on to do more stuff with Black Hole and she confronts the old Mirror Master, Sam Scudder and Top and literally destroys Sam Scudder like that, like immediately leaving the top there like what? What's going on? And we get the bombshell information that Sam Scudder, that the original Mirror Master was a creation, a fractal creation of Eva's while she was in the mirror dimension. So he was like one of her, or I think she said he was her, that she said that he was her first. So he was running around in the real world as a mirror clone or creation, I guess. And Eva was using him. Now you could question why that is so much stuff went kind of unnoticed because we do know that the original mirror master had some interactions with the flash, but that could also mean that's why she knew about so many things that were going on. There's probably tons of other mirror people in the world that she controlled, but he was her first. And so that was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, she does that. And that's, you know, that's a nice way to connect it. So switching over to the top stuff or whatever, uh, she ends up in custody with, uh, you know, with Cecile interrogating her. And this again is why Cecile, for me is so wasted on the show. It gets to be slightly interesting when Cecile is using her empathic powers with top. We find out that top is projecting emotions to Cecile. Then we find out that top does have empathic powers and that her vertigo powers kind of manifested from being an empath. So she learned how to do that because of her empathic powers. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like, okay, I guess it's not my favorite thing in the world, but whatever. Anyway, so she shows this to Cecile, to Cecile. Cecile leaves, and then when she comes back in the same episode, all of a sudden she's powerful enough to use these powers against Top with literally no training, no work on it, no nothing. Like, immediately she knows how to do it, and she gets the information they need before the end of the episode. And I'm like, this is what I've been complaining about for so long. Characters that are just plot movers or plot devices. They're these characters that are just there to further the plot of the episode and there's no growth on their characters. I'm not the biggest Cecile fan, but I really just don't like this. It felt so weird. Anyway, basically we end up seeing uh, that she gets the information and the black hole plane carrying their tech is flying over the city and there's an explosive on the wing there and they have to stop it and they couldn't do it before because of Barry's power, but now he's got his speed back. That was the urgency that caused Nash to do it. So Barry goes to stop this from happening, which by the way, we got to see his suit sort of like transform onto him, like nanotech transform on him, which I thought was really cool. No ring, it just kind of formed around him or whatever. That's very neat. We get to see that, but he's flying through the city. And I'll be honest with you guys, this, the lightning looked different to me. Not only that, but he seemed more powerful than what we saw. Maybe it's because he's just been out of power for so long that it just seemed like it was more powerful. I don't know. It looked amazing. He stopped the stuff, the, the explosive on the plane there, jumps down, saves the day, basically stops the tech from coming down. And Barry has his speed back. We have this new speed force. I can't wait to see what it's going to be. I think it's going to be really, really exciting. Let's talk about the big reveal at the end of this premiere episode. And that is Eva isn't Eva. She is actually a mirror clone of Eva who has come out of the world of the mirror world and thinks that she is Eva. So she's literally a copy of the original Eva McCulloch because Joseph Carver finds her on the floor basically deceased after getting knocked into the mirror. And she sees this in this video footage that she finds on the jump drive. And it confirms it that she is not Eva. So this changes everything for her. Everything she knew or everything she thought was a lie. So all the fighting she's been doing, everything she's been trying to figure out, she is literally just a clone of Eva inside the mirror world that has now come out and taken over her life. And so everything she did, she didn't really do for anything. So it's going to be really interesting to see where she goes from here, because now that she knows this, how is this going to change things for her in the next couple of episodes? Because we're going to wrap up stuff from season six in these next couple episodes. All pretty exciting stuff. Very, very exciting to see this the show come back. Very happy with it. What an action-packed two hours of Arrowverse of DC TV tonight. We had The Flash, and then we had Superman and Lois. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these two as much as I did. I would score this episode of The Flash an 8 out of 10. I think it was very solid. I still think, I'm like again, with these premieres, I never want to give them perfect scores, even if I really love them, because I think the show has places to go. So we're going to give it an 8 out of 10, because I had very little to, to not like about it. I think the Cecile stuff was kind of weird, and some of the stuff with the Wells' things made me question. But, you know, we're going to take it down to an 8 out of 10, which I think is still solid. So two 
solid hours of television with Flash, Superman, and Lois. I think we're going to have a great season. We are going to have a great season with these two shows. Which, by the way, if you missed my rant and review for Superman and Lois Episode 2, make sure you wait at the end of this video, click on the link, and go watch it. Also, if you're brand new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and become part of the Ericverse. Would love to have you here. Hit the join button to become part of Team Eric. Leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of the shows that we have on right now. It's a lot of Ericverse content, but tell me your thoughts and opinions on this Flash premiere. What did you think? Were you hype? Did it live up to your expectations? What are your overall thoughts and opinions on everything that happened? Any theories you might have? Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Be back in a flash. That was corny.